सो टेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी फाइव अनएलॉइड डिवोशन कुंती उवाच त्वयी में अनन्या विषया मत्तीर मधुपते अशक्रत रतिम उदहवत अध गंगे वौघम उदनवंती ओ लॉर्ड ऑफ मधु एज द गंगे फॉर अवेयर फ्लोज टू द सी विदाउट इंट्रेंस लेट माई अट्रैक्शन बी कॉन्स्टेंटली ड्रॉन एन टू यू विदाउट बींग डाइवर्टेड टू एनी वन एल्स त्वयी में अनन्या विषया मतिर मधु पते अशक्रत रतिम उद्वहत अढ गंगे वौघम उदनवंती श्रीमद्भागवतम वन पॉइंट एट पॉइंट फोर्टी टू परफेक्शन ऑफ प्योर डिवोशनल सर्विस इज अटेंड वेन ऑल अटेंशन इज डाइवर्टेड टूअर्ड द ट्रांसेंडेंटल लविंग सर्विस ऑफ द लॉर्ड to cut off the tie of all other affections does not mean complete negation of the finer elements like affection for someone else this is not possible a living being whoever he may be must have this feeling of affection for others because this is a symptom of life the symptoms of life such as desire anger hankerings and feelings of attraction cannot be annihilated only the objective has to be changed desire cannot be negated but in devotional service the desire is changed only for the service of the lord in place of desire for sense gratification the so called affection for family society country etc consists of different phase of sense gratification when this desire is changed for the satisfaction of the lord it is called devotional service in the bhagavad gita we can see that arjuna desired not to fight with his brothers and relations just to satisfy his own personal desires but when he heard the message of the lord shrimad bhagavad gita he changed his decision and served the lord and for his doing so he became a famous devotee of the lord for it is declared in all the scriptures that arjuna attained spiritual perfection by devotional service to the lord in friendship the fighting was there the friendship was there arjuna was there and krishna was there but arjuna became a different person by devotional service therefore the prayers of kunti also indicate the same categorical changes in activities shrimati kunti wanted to serve the lord without diversion and that was her prayer this unalloyed devotion is the ultimate goal of life our attention is usually diverted to the service of something which is non godly or not in the program of the lord when the program is changed into the service of the lord that is to say when the senses are purified in relation with the service of the lord it is called pure unalloyed devotional service Shrimati Kunti Devi wanted that perfection and prayed for it from the Lord. Her affection for the Pandavas and the Vrishtis is not out of rage for devotional service because the service of the Lord and the service of the devotees are identical. Sometimes service to the devotee is more valuable than service to the Lord, but here the affection of Kunti Devi for the Pandavas and the Vrishtis was due to family relation. This tie of affection in terms of material relation is the relation of Maya. because the relations of the body or the mind are due to the influence of the external energy relations of the soul established in relation with the supreme soul are factual relations when kunti devi wanted to cut off the family relation she meant to cut off the relation of the skin the skin relation is the cause of material bondage but the relation of the soul is the cause of freedom this relation of the soul to the soul can be established by the via medium of the relationship with the super soul seeing in the darkness is not seeing but seeing by the light of the sun means seeing the sun and everything else which was unseen in the darkness that is the way of devotional service in the previous verse of shrimad bhagavatam kunti prayed that the lord kindly cut off her attraction for her kinsmen the pandava and the vrishni families however giving up one's attraction for material things is not sufficient the mayavadi philosophers say brahma satyam jagan mithya this world is false and brahman spirit is truth we admit this but qualify it as living entities we want enjoyment enjoyment means variety it is not possible to enjoy anything without variety why has god created so many colors and so many forms in order to create enjoyment out of variety for variety is the mother of enjoyment mayavadi philosophers impersonalists want to negate this variety but what is the result because they do not engage in devotional service they simply undertake the hard labor of austerities and penances without achieving any permanent result this is explained by a prayer in shrimad bhagavatam 10.2. 32 न अन्य अरविंद अक्ष विमुक्त मनीनास त्वयि अस्तभवत अविशुद्ध बुद्धया अरुया क्रश्रेन परमपदम ततः पतन्ति अधो अनाद्रता युष्मद अनग्रहया ओ लोटस आईड लॉर्ड दोज हु थिंक दे आर लिबरेटेड इन दिस लाइफ बट डू नॉट रेंडर डिवोशनल सर्विस टू यू मस्ट बी ऑफ प्योर इंटेलिजेंस इम्प्योर इंटेलिजेंस Although they accept severe austerities and penances and rise to the spiritual position to impersonal Brahman realization, they fall down again because they neglect to worship your lotus feet. The human form of life is meant for re-establishing our relationship with God and acting according to that relationship. Even in ordinary dealings, one businessman who intends to do business with another must first establish some relationship with him, and then transactions can take place. Similarly, a husband and wife establish a relationship by marriage, and then they live together in a similar way. 
human life is meant for re-establishing our relationship with God. The material world means forgetfulness of this relationship. There is no Krishna consciousness in this material world. For as soon as there is Krishna consciousness, as soon as there is action on the basis of Krishna, it is no longer the material world but the spiritual world. As a woman, Kunti Devi had a relationship with two families. That was her attachment. Therefore, she prayed to Krishna to cut off this relationship and free her. But after becoming free, what should she do? That is the question. One may be employed in some business and feeling inconvenience, resign. That resignation may be alright. But if by resigning one becomes unemployed and has no engagement, then what is the value of resigning? Those who are frustrated and confused want to negate this material world. They don't know what they want, but they do not know what they do not want. People are always saying, I don't want this. But what do they want? That they do not know. What one should actually want is explained by Kunti Devi. She says, let my family relationship cease, but let my relationship with you be confirmed. In other words, she does not want to be attracted to anything but Krishna. This is perfection and this is actually wanted. The word Ananya Vishaya means Ananya Bhakti, undeviating devotional service. We must simply be attached to Krishna 24 hours a day without deviation. In this way, our renunciation can be perfect. If we think we can be attached to Krishna and material things at the same time, we are mistaken. We cannot ignite a fire and at the same time pour water on it. If we do, the fire will not act. The Mayavadi Sannyasis renounce this world. Brahma Satyam Jagat Mithya. It is very good to preach renunciation of the world, but side by side we must have attraction for something, otherwise our renunciation will not remain. We see many Mayavadi sannyasis who say Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya, but after they take sannyasa, they return to the material world to open hospitals and do philanthropic work. Why? If they have left this world considering it Mithya false, why do they return to take up politics, philanthropy and sociology? Actually, this is bound to happen, for we are living entities and are active. If out of frustration we try to become inactive, we shall fail in our attempt, we must engage in activities. The supreme activity, the Brahman spiritual activity is devotional service. Unfortunately, the Mayavadis do not know this. They think that spiritual world is void. However, the spiritual world is exactly like the material world in that it has varieties. In the spiritual world, there are also houses, trees, roads, carriers, everything is there but without the material inabilities. As described in Brahma Sahita 5.29, Chinta Mani Prakara Satma Shu Kalpa Vriksha Lakshavrati Shu Surbir Abhipalayantam Lakshmi Sastra Satta Sambrahma Sevyamanam Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bhajam I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, the first progenitor who is tending the cows, yielding all desires, in abodes built with spiritual gems, surrounded by millions of purpose trees, and always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds of thousands of goddesses of fortune or gopis. In the spiritual world, there are kalparviksha trees which yield whatever type of fruit we desire. In the material world, a mango tree cannot supply grapes, nor can a grapevine supply mangoes. In the spiritual world, however, if you take a mango from a tree and at the same time desire grapes, the tree will supply them. This is called desire tree. These are some of the actualities of the spiritual world. In this material world, we require sunlight and moonlight, but in the spiritual world, there is no need of sunlight and moonlight because everything and everyone is effulgent. In Krishna Leela, Krishna stole butter and the neighborhood friends of Mother Yashoda complained. Actually, they were not complaining, but were just enjoying the bodily features and the fun of Krishna. They told Mother Yashoda, your son comes to our house and steals butter. We try to conceal it in the dark so that he cannot see it, but somehow he still finds it out. You had better take away all his ornaments because we think that the light of his jewels helps him find the butter pot. Mother Yashoda replied, yes, I will take off all his ornaments. But the neighbors would reply, no, 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 it is useless. Somehow, this body has an boy has an effulgence that comes out of himself. He can find the butter even without the ornaments. Thus, the transcendental body is effulgent. It is because of the effulgence of Krishna's transcendental body that there is light. Whatever light we see is simply borrowed light from Krishna's effulgence as stated in Brahma Sita 5.14. Yasya Prabha Prabhoto Jagat Anda Koti Koti Shvashesha Vasudhati Vibhuti Bhinnam Tad Brahma Nishkalam Anant Ashesha Bhutam Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami In the millions and millions of universes, there are innumerable planets and each of them is different from the others by its cosmic constitution. All of these planets are situated within the spiritual effulgence called the Brahma Jyotir. This Brahma Jyotir is the bodily effulgence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead whom I worship. The bodily effulgence of Krishna generates millions of universes. In this solar system, the sun produces many planets and because of sunshine, the planets are warm and the seasons change. Because of the sun, there are trees, green foliage, fruits and flowers. Similarly, whatever we see in creation is all due to Krishna's bodily effulgence. The Mayavadis simply see the effulgence which is impersonal. They cannot see anything more. We may see an airplane rise in the sky, but after a while it passes out of our sight due to dazzling sunshine. The airplane is there, but we cannot see it. Similarly, if we simply try to see the effulgent Brahma Jyotir, we are unable to see within it. One of the mantras in the Ishopanishad therefore petitions the Lord to wind up his effulgence so that he can be seen properly. 
the mayavadi philosophers cannot see the personal activities of krishna nor the planet where krishna is personally active the bhagavatam says aruya krachena param padam tata padanti adho anadrata ishmat anugraha because they do not see the lotus feet of krishna they have to return to this material world despite all their serious penances and austerities the renunciation in itself will not help us we may artificially renounce but again we shall become so called enjoyers just such renunciation and enjoyment is like a pendulum that goes this way and that on one side we become false renunciants and on the other we become false enjoyers the remedy however is here if we really want to become detached from this material world we must increase our attachment for krishna consciousness renunciation alone will not help us therefore kunti devi prays tvai me ananya vishaya she prays that her attraction be constantly drawn unto krishna without being diverted to anything else this is bhakti pure devotional service for as mentioned by rupa goswami devotional service should be unalloyed anya bilashita shunyam jnana karma adi anavritam In this material world, there are nannies and karmis. The karmis are fools who unnecessarily work very hard, and the nannies are those who, when a little elevated, think why work so hard. So many things are not required. Why accumulate so much money and food and so much false prestige? The nanny thinks in this way. The bhakta, whoever is beyond the karmi and the nanny, the karmi has many desires and the nanny tries to get rid of all desires. But desirelessness can be possible only when we desire to serve Krishna. otherwise it is not possible to get rid of desires jnana karma adi anavratam as bhaktas we should have no desires for jnana and karma we should be without attachment for material things but we must have attachment for krishna in this way our attachment will be detachment will be fixed we must cultivate krishna consciousness favorably anukullena krishna anushilanam this means thinking of how krishna will be satisfied we must always think of krishna just like the gopis the krishna consciousness of the gopis was perfect because they had to de- no desire other than to try to please krishna that is perfection therefore chaitanya mahaprabhu recommends ramya kachit upasna vrajavadhu vargena ya kalpita there is no better process by which to worship the supreme personality of godhead than that method adopted by the gopis the gopis had no desire other than to satisfy krishna all the gopis tried to satisfy him including the elder gopis yashoda and her friends and so also did the elderly gopas like nanda maharaj and his friends the boys and girls of vrindavan who were of the same as krishna also tried to satisfy him everyone tried to satisfy krishna even the cows the flowers the fruits and the water of vrindavan this is because everything in vrindavan is spiritual nothing is material we should therefore understand the difference between spiritual and material that which is material has no living symptoms and that which is spiritual has all living symptoms both the trees in the spiritual world and those in the material world are living entities but in trees here the living symptoms are absent a human being is a living entity and the devotees in the spiritual world are also living entities but in the human beings who are not krishna conscious the serial symptoms of life are absent actually there is no other consciousness but krishna consciousness and that consciousness is spiritual thus even while in this material world if we simply increase our krishna consciousness we shall live in the spiritual world if we live in the temple we live in the spiritual world because in the temple there is no business other than krishna consciousness there are so many engagements carried out for krishna those who strictly follow the regulations of krishna consciousness actually live in the spiritual world not the material world we may think we are living in new york los angeles or elsewhere but we are actually living in vaikuntha it is a question of consciousness a bug may sit on the same seat with the spiritual master but because the spiritual master has developed consciousness and the bug does not they are different they may be sitting in the same place but the bug remains a bug and the spiritual master remains the spiritual master the position in space may remain the same just as we remain in the material world or the spiritual world but if our krishna consciousness is strong we are not in the material world the renunciation by itself the simple giving up of worldly things is not sufficient renunciation may be helpful process but it will not help absolutely when we increase our attachment for krishna our renunciation will be perfect as we increase attachment for krishna attachment for this material world will automatically diminish attachments for krishna and the material world cannot go hand in hand if a woman is attached to two men her husband and a paramour she cannot maintain her attachment for both her attachment will increase for her paramour although she may work at her husband so very nicely her mind will be attached to her paramar and she will think when shall i meet him tonight in the same way if we increase our attachment for krishna the detachment or renunciation of this material world will automatically come bhakti pare sanubhav bhavo viraktir anyatra cha bhagavatam 11.2.42 thus kunti devi prays to krishna that he may grant her his mercy by which she can become attached to him we cannot increase our attachment for krishna without krishna's mercy we cannot become devotees without krishna's mercy therefore we simply have to serve krishna or by service krishna is satisfied 
Krishna does not require everyone's service, for he is perfect in himself. However, if we give him service wholeheartedly and sincerely, then by his mercy we shall make advancement. Sevan mukhe hi jivvadao swayam evas furatadaha. God will reveal himself to us. We cannot see God with our blunt eyes. How then can we see him? Premanjana churita bhakti vilochanena santa sadaiva hridayeshu vilokayanti ramasaita 5.38 we have to smear our eyes with the ointment of love then krishna will reveal himself krishna will actually come in front of us when dhruva maharaj was undergoing penance and meditating upon the form of vishnu within his heart the vishnu form suddenly disappeared and his meditation broke upon opening his eyes dhruva maharaj immediately saw vishnu before him like dhruva maharaj we should always think of krishna and when we attain perfection we shall see krishna before us this is the process we should not be too hasty we should wait for the mature time of course it is good to be eager to see krishna but we should not become discouraged if we do not see him immediately if a woman gets married and wants a child immediately she will be disappointed it is not possible to have a child immediately she must wait similarly we cannot expect that just because we engage ourselves in krishna consciousness we can see krishna immediately but we must have faith that we will see him we must have firm faith that because we are engaged in krishna consciousness we shall be able to see krishna face to face we should not be disappointed we should simply go on with our krishna conscious activities and the time will come when we will see krishna just as kunti devi sees him face to face there is no doubt about this in the bhagavad gita it is stated that even if one is sometimes found to be somewhat misbehaved he is to be considered saintly if he engages steadily in the service of krishna sometimes american or european devotees may be criticized because they make mistakes and fall short of the system for worshiping the deity as practiced in india but still according to bhagavad gita they must be considered saintly you must fix our minds upon serving krishna sincerely and seriously and then even if there is some mistake krishna will excuse it rupa goswami says tasmat kena pi upayena mana krishne niveshayet if we should we should first fix our, our minds upon krishna and then ability to follow the other rules and regulations will automatically follow in the beginning we should try our best to fix our minds upon the lotus feet of krishna and then everything else will automatically become correct kunti devi addresses krishna as madhupati krishna has thousands of name and the name madhupati indicates that he killed the demon madhu krishna consciousness is likened to a river but not an ordinary river it is like the river ganges which is very pure and directly connected to krishna kunti devi prays that just as the river ganges flows towards the sea her attraction will flow incessantly towards krishna's lotus feet this is called ananya bhakti an alloyed devotion thus kunti devi prays that her attraction for krishna will flow without hindrance kunti devi says त्वयि मे अनन्या विषया मतिर मधुपते शक्रत रतिम उद्वहत अध गंगे वहगहु वगहु उदनवंती ओ लॉर्ड ऑफ मधु एज द गंगेस फॉर अवर फ्लोस टू द सी विदाउट हिंड्रेंस लेट माय अट्रैक्शन बी कांस्टेंटली ड्रॉन अनटू यू विदाउट बीइंग डाइवर्टेड टू एनीवन एल्स त्वयि मे अनन्या विषया मतिर मधुपते शक्रत रतिम उद्वहत अध गंगे वगहु उदनवंती हरे कृष्णा धन्यवाद